I am going to walk everyone through the SAM meeting today. We're going to talk about what it is, um, what it'll be in the future, um, and how you are going to meet your requirement this semester. It's actually not as much work that um, as I think a lot of people think it could be. Um, so that's the good news. <laughs> the uh, the tougher part, of course, is just getting organized and understanding exactly what, what has to be done um, between now and registration. Um, so to begin, I am Kristen Bergen. I'm one of the advisors in the School of Engineering Hub. Um, I might be your advisor if you are undeclared engineering, materials engineering, or electrical engineering. Um, I am currently sharing the home page for the SOE Hub. Um, so you can see our URL right here. Uh, over break, we did update it, which we do re quite regularly. So you will find some new looks, some new buttons to help you out. Um, and we, we really mean it when we say we try to put everything on our website for you, um, especially because this semester is quite busy for us as your advisors because we are meeting with everyone. Um, sometimes you might find that the answer to your question is on the home page and rather than waiting a couple days for an email to be responded to, um, you can just come here and find, for example, academic resources and support, um, which is what we're going to be looking at right now. Um, so within this, um, the registration support for the class of 2026 is what you looked at over the summer when you were first preparing for registration. So if there are resources there that you're comfortable with and you want to use as you prepare for future registrations, you will find them on the home page. Um, but today, of course, we're going to be looking at this button right here, which is the SAM meeting. So I'm going to go through this quite quickly. I'm not going to read it out for you, um, but of course I will send this link out to everyone once the meeting ends. Um, but to begin with, of course, we want to talk about what is that SAM meeting. So the SAM meeting stands for Student Advisor Meeting. So yes, when we say SAM meeting, we're saying Student Advisor Meeting Meeting. Um, however, it is um, you know, one of the most important meetings that you can have with your academic advisor it happens once a year. Um, and the reason why it's so important is because it is an actual requirement. Um, a requirement meaning that if you don't fulfill this opportunity to meet with your advisor, you will have a registration hold on your account and you will not be able to register for the next semester's courses. So for some of you, that might be this coming summer. For some of you, that would be next fall. Obviously, those things are far away from now. Um, definitely not on the mindset <laughs> with us being in the second week of classes. However, there is a little bit of work that has to be done for this very first SAM meeting. Um, and the reason why is we, our goal in the hub is to make sure that you are fully prepared for the relationship that you are going to have with your faculty advisor. It will be very different than the relationship that you've been building with us in the hub. Um, of course, as staff, our only job is you. Um, that's why each of us work with about one or probably about 200 students a piece. Um, when you get to your faculty advisor, the advising load is much smaller, but it's also because they are teaching courses, doing presentations, doing research, part of committees, all of that stuff. Um, so we want to make sure that when you get to them, you fully understand and are comfortable and confident with your graduation requirements. So that way you can talk to them about the more exciting stuff, which is, of course, getting jobs and getting research, um, how you can use their network to expand your network. Um, you don't really want to use that precious time with them to talk about Haas requirements. <laughs> um, we we want to make sure that you have that all set with us. Um, and then this is another reminder that at the end of the semester you are going to transition to that faculty advisor and the hub will no longer be your primary source for academic advising. Um, we will be <laughs> moving on to the class of 2027. Again, that's a far way down the road. We are still your support for this entire semester, um, but that's why this meeting is so, so important. Um, you know, you want to take advantage of us while you have us. So in this, you will see there are three parts to what we're going to talk about. So the student advisor meeting, which we really just covered. Um, so if you scroll through this, you can see how to prepare for your first SAM. What are the requirements of SAM? What if you don't meet your SAM? And when can you schedule your SAM? So talking about the requirements, 
Um, this is an, an image, so you could actually save it, download it, print it if it helps you. Um, but these are the three bullet points that you need to meet for your SAM meeting. So the first one is to submit a well-developed four-year curriculum plan using the provided Excel sheet. So this Excel sheet was the one that we emailed you over the summer. It lives on the SOE Hub website. Of course, there's a button here too in this, in this resource that will take you to it. Um, but we really want you to use this Excel sheet because we create it in-house in the hub. It includes important information about um, elective credits later down the road, um, but also it really is a great space to have a worksheet or, you know, like scrap paper when making plans of could I study abroad, can I fit in an extra internship, what happens if I want to graduate early or if I want to add two minors. It gives you that space to move your curriculum around as long as you're paying attention to the prereqs and corecs. Um, and it's something that, you know, if you bring it to us and you bring it to your faculty advisors in the future, you know, it's easy to to read and to go through because it is a material that was created by the hub. The second thing um, is to complete a Haas worksheet. So this, this is another document that, yes, of course, lives in this resource and on our website and has been emailed to you. Um, the goal of this, of course, comes with the understanding that we know how Haas is an incredibly complicated um, requirement. Um, there's many facets to it. Everyone is an individual, so everyone has different ways that they want to pursue their Haas requirements. So this makes sure that while you're doing what you want to do with Haas, you are tracking, you know, your communication and your Haas inquiry and your 4,000 level. So we'll have you fill out that worksheet and then the last thing is to simply declare your Haas pathway on SIS. Um, pretty simple, you can change your pathway every semester, once a semester, so even if you're not totally sure what you want to do, we're still going to ask that you declare something to, to, you know, start committing to the fact that you do have to declare a pathway and, you know, you have to meet that three course requirement within five courses. Um, so that will be another element of it. Um, as I mentioned, if you don't do any of the, or the, what I mentioned above, there is a registration hold on your account. The only person that can remove this hold is your assigned academic advisor. Um, so Again, on our website, you can see exactly who your advisor is if you're not sure. You can also always look on DegreeWorks or within SIS to see who your academic advisor is, um, including their contact information, which will be very useful when you move to your faculty advisor. Um, another important thing <laughs> that I do actually want to point out is that this four-year plan is also there to make sure that, you know, no nightmares will show up in your future. Um, in the past, things that us advisors have discovered are students who are using another cohort's curriculum. If you use an upperclassman's curriculum, for example, they might have different classes that are required, the prereqs might be a little bit different, um, and this could result in you graduating late um, if you're not following the exact set of courses that you need to follow. Um, if you're ever nervous about it, you can always ask your advisor, and of course you can always use the resources that we have on our website. Um, do not Google your curriculum. Do not Google the college catalog. Um, if you pull Google the college catalog, it will absolutely pull up an archived version. Um, it goes back to 2007, which, you know, some of the classes that are listed there don't even exist on our campus anymore. Um, so these are really important notes. Um, sweet. Okay. So when can you schedule your SAM? You could actually do it right now. So when we close this meeting, you could head to the SOE Hub website and book your meeting within the month of February or early March. Um, we have already noticed that some of you have taken advantage of this and have already booked the meeting. Um, what's nice about it is that if you get it done early, you don't have to worry about it in the middle of the semester when you might be overwhelmed with your, your classes, with midterms. Um, and if you do schedule it, it gives you sort of a deadline to complete that four-year plan, which, by the way, should only take you about 30 minutes, 40 minutes to complete, um, and your worksheet and declaring your pathway. All right. So the big part of this, obviously, is the four-year plan of study. So this resource, if you watch this video, it'll give you a run-through. Um, it will look familiar. It is what we... Um, proposed to you this summer as, as a resource as well. Um, 
you can download your template by clicking this button. It'll download as an Excel sheet. Um, and I will do that now so we can see it together. Now if we open it, so the first thing you're going to need to do is enable editing and then you can see on the bottom are all the tabs for all the different engineering majors. So of course what you'll do is you'll pick your major, you can delete all the other ones, um, and then the first thing I would recommend doing is making a copy so that way you have one sheet that is you know, forever, <laughs> the template, you know, non-disturbed, so you have all the information you need, and the second one is the one where you can, you know, move stuff around, saying you brought in, like, Calc 1 as an AP credit, and then you can, you can start to manage it as you need to. Um, next week, I'm going to do a four-year plan uh, workshop at the same time. Um, oh, it's not showing it. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I was showing my whole screen, so hold on two seconds. Da, 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 da. Thank you. Share. I'll just do screen two. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so what I just did, uh, just so I can show you again, is um, so the Excel sheet opens up. And you'll a yellow thing will be up here. You'll just have to click enable editing so that you can edit it. You go to your um, major. Uh, you can see all the different engin engineering majors are here. Um, and what I would recommend doing is deleting everything that has nothing to do with you, just to make it a bit neater. And then you can actually make a copy of your sheet. Um, and the reason, as I was saying, that I recommend doing this, oops, let me do that again, is so that way you have an undisturbed template that you can always look at and refer to. And then you can have the copy where you can come in and edit it as you need to. So the example I was showing is removing Calculus 1 and moving it up here to where all the AP credits are. Um, so next week at the same time, I am going to do a four-year plan workshop. Um, this will be great because I will go through and do an example. Um, and you can have the Excel sheet with you if you want to work on it alongside me. Um, but we will we'll go into more depth about this four-year plan. And then the following week, we'll go into Haas requirements as a worksheet. Um, so the Haas requirements, if you click this button, it goes into the typical resource. Um, so if you need a refresher about Haas requirements, which I totally understand, again, we know, you know, they're, they're pretty complicated, um, but you will find the Haas worksheet right here, and you will find the list of integrated pathways here. All right. So to summarize, what do you need to bring to your SAM meeting? Oh, I will fix that button later. <laughs> What it does is it takes you right back up to the spreadsheet. So as a reminder, for your SAM, you need to show up to the meeting with a four-year plan, a completed Haas worksheet, and you need you can bring a screenshot or show us how you declared your pathway on SIS. Um, of course, as you're doing any of this, write down the questions that you have as you're fulfilling it, so that way you can just go through your list of questions, make sure that you're feeling confident about all this information. Um, and that's about it. So that's everything that I wanted to talk about today. Let me double check my, my post-it note. Yep, looks good. Um, so I will now turn the floor to you guys if anyone has any